by God's wonderful grace and mercy and through the Holy Spirit's guidance, we continue to learn what our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ gave to us and that is his holy scriptures and we have learned and continue to learn and continue to make progress and this week this midweek we want to continue to learn what our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ gave us all and as we know there are only two ways in this world. There is the right, the wrong. There is heaven, there is hell. There is salvation and of course uh, damnation. But Christ has given us even in the Old Testament, what did he say? Life. He says, choose life. So if Christ has granted us this wonderful justification by faith in him, then it means we can enjoy all the spiritual, physical, and material blessings available to us because of that work at Calvary. So here, is God's word and of course we've said it before and I believe uh, once we start you will understand that my personal email goes with this and that is are you wheat or chaff are you for Christ or for the enemy are you right or wrong so basically that's what Christ uh, gave. So let us hear what he said and then apply it to our lives. Matthew chapter 13 and let us hear what the Lord himself gave. Starting from, let us start from verse 24 of Matthew 13 and this is what the Lord Jesus Christ said. He says, Another parable put he forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which sowed good seed in his field. 25. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares, T-A-R-E-S, among the wheat, and went, and went his way. 26. But when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tares also, 27. So, the servants of the household came and said unto him, Sir, didn't this, well, should I say, didn't, which is did not, thou sow good seed in thy field? From whence then hath it tears. 28. He said unto them, An enemy hath done this. The servants said unto him, Wilt thou then that we go and gather them up? 29. But he said, Nay, lest while ye gather up the tears, ye root up also the wheat with them. 30. Let both grow together until the harvest, and in the time of harvest, I will sow, I will say, pardon me, to 
the reapers, gather ye together first the tares, and bind them in bundles to burn them, but gather the wheat into my barn. 31. Another parable puts he forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like to a grain of mustard seed, which a man took and sown in his field. 31. That's 31. 32. Which indeed is the least of all seeds, but when it is grown, it is the greatest among herbs and becometh a tree so that the birds of all of the earth come and lodge in the branches thereof. 32, right? So I believe we can stop there and then hear what he had to say. All right? Um, all right. Okay, let's continue. I think by continuing, we can uh, get to it eventually. Then verse 33. Again, we have just read that. Let me move the screen apart. So we now go to 33, which is another parable. Speak he unto them, the kingdom of heaven is like unto leaven, which a woman took and hid in three measures of meal, till the whole was leavened. 34. All these things speak Jesus unto the multitude in parables, and without a parable speak he not unto them. 35. That it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophets, saying, I will open my mouth in parables, I will utter things which have been kept secret or from the foundation of the world. 36. Then Jesus sent the multitude away and went into the house, and his disciples came unto him, saying, Declare unto us the parables of the tares of the field. Sorry. And that's what the disciples wanted to know. They wanted to know the meaning, right? So we continue. We start from 37. He, the Lord Jesus Christ, answered and said unto them, He that soweth the good seed is the Son of Man, which is He, the Lord Jesus Christ. Right? 38. The field is the world. The good seed are the children of the kingdom which is Christians, but the tares are the children of the wicked one. Hmm. 39. The enemy that sued them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the world, and the reapers are the angels. 40. As therefore the tares are gathered and burned in the fire, so shall it be in the end of this world. Hmm. 41. The Son of Man shall send forth his angels 
And what would they do? And they shall gather out of his kingdom all things that offend and them which do iniquity. 42. And shall cast them into a furnace of fire. There shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. 43. Then shall the righteous shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father. Who has ears to hear, let him and her hear. Amen. This is Matthew chapter 13, verses 24 to 43. What is Christ saying here? So, if we can understand it, the main question or the lesson has to do what are you? Are you wheat or are you chaff or tear? You are either right or wrong, up or down, a Christian, not a Christian. There is no half in any of Christianity. You are either true or fake. You are either original or imitation. You are either sort of playing around with the scriptures or taking it seriously. What are we doing with what God has given to us? Are we obedient or disobedient? Are we? I'm sure we can go on. We know there are only two ways. There are no three ways. Some people think that, oh, you can be half this, half that. It is not possible. It's either heaven or hell. May God help us to really surrender our lives and pray that our loved ones, our friends, our neighbors, even our enemies will become wheat, become original, become true, become faithful to God. As Christ gave, he was serious. I mean, we know all the scriptures, but sometimes in our life today, we feel, oh, we can be half this, half that. The parable he gave, the disciples said, well, can you tell us what you mean? And it is very clear. So, may the Lord help us. What happened? He says, the kingdom of God has to do with this world, the Christianity in this world. 24 again, the kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man or a woman which sowed good seed in his field, in his garden, or in his farm. We know we are farmers and they've been giving out all this food throughout the years. And God has made it possible so that they are sowing good seed. And of course, what has happened in this world? They are now trying to give artificial food artificial things which they say well they're trying to give so they, they can feed a whole lot of people no you don't need to make the food we eat the drink we drink our vegetables to be fake to be imitation and they are doing that it's all actually on the internet what they have done and people who are also wicked have followed that agenda 
of trying to create, but well, not create, provide imitation food, fake food, which they have. Well, the video is out there, and it is it is it is wickedness to be giving imitation food, all because they want to make money. It's bad. It's wickedness. May God help us. Here, we go back and says, if God planted good seed, if we have farmers who also plant good seed, they are blessed. But then if somebody comes, he is following the devil's agenda to do wrong things. He says, verse 25, but while men slept, we don't have to sleep before bad things happen, right? We know his enemy, the devil, uh, came and sowed tears among the wheat and went and went his way. 26. But when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tears, the fake food, the imitation also. 27. So the servant of the householder came and said unto him, Sir, didn't not thou, or this D-I-D-S-T, that is the Old King James he said, "Didn't you, in, in short, uh, sow good seed in thy field? From whence then hath it tears?" They're asking the man. He said, "Didn't you sow good seed? How come this is happening? That's the devil's strategy, right?" And so. Then he said unto them, you know, an evil, an enemy hath done this. The servant said unto him, Will thou then that we go and gather them up? Do we see how patient the man is? That is the householder, which is represented by our almighty heavenly father. He said, oh, no, 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 don't do it now. Just wait. Wait until the end. Wait until at the end of the world. That's what is happening here. 28. But he said, Nay, lest while ye gather up the tares, ye roots up also the wheat with them. 30. Let both grow together until the harvest and in in the time of harvest I will say to the reapers gather up together first the tears the imitation the fake and bind them in bundles to burn them but gather the wheat into my barn. Amen. Do we see it? God is patient. The example here is very true, very correct. God is patient. He doesn't want anyone to go to the lake of fire. He is patiently waiting for you and me. Are we paying attention? Are we trying to say, oh, let's do half, half Christianity, half obedience, half that. It's not possible. You are either wheat or tares or chaff. You know, we can only be one or the other. Whoever thinks that they can be, oh, half Christian, or should we say they obey Christ? Well, sometimes they obey when it's convenient. And they disobey when they think that, oh, well, you know, this. We cannot be both. 
we have to be genuine, we have to be authentic, we have to be right, we have to be righteous or holy. Some people think that, oh no, you cannot be holy. We are, once we are cleansed by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, we are made holy, we are made righteous. So anyone, should we say anyone, meaning Christians, non-Christians, anyone, of course, some people think that all who say they are Christians are Christians. No. You are either wheat or chaff. You are either right or wrong. You are either obedient or disobedient. Half Christianity is not a Christian. Half obedience is disobedience. No. For example, you are traveling on the highway, right? And you see a road that says right or left. You don't see left, right, half right, or left, you know, it's either one or the other. But when you get to a point where there's no sign and you wonder, do I go, which one do I go? Or let me just get to the one that I want. You find that you've gone to the wrong place and you end up at the wrong place. Or wrong destination. So this is a very straightforward message, straightforward commandment from the Lord Jesus Christ. If, of course, the apostles said, well, can you explain uh, what you say because you are talking about wheat and or, uh, you know, chaff. Chaff Again, of course, when I say chaff, it is also in uh, you know, Matthew, um, you know, chapter 3. So, but this particular passage that we are listening and hearing from the Lord Jesus Christ contains the right way, reminding us that the field, jumping to verse, uh, let's, okay, let's go to verse 37, he, the Lord Jesus Christ, answered and said unto them, he that soweth the good seed is the son of man, the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the one who has sown the good seed. He has given us the gospel. He has given us salvation. He has given us eternal life. But we know there's an enemy. We know there's an enemy. Some of us think there's no enemy. There's an enemy. It is not our brother, our sister, our father, our friends. It is the devil. So, verse 38. The field is the world. Do we see it? The good seed are the children of the kingdom. Anyone who is a child of God, is considered the good seed from the Lord Jesus Christ's message here. Are the children of the kingdom of God, but the tares, T-A-R-E-S, or the imitation, or the fake, or uh, whatever you call them, have Christians are the children of the wicked one. Who is the wicked one? The devil. So if the devil has fooled people and they are doing everything wrong, it is what has been going on. 39. The enemy that soweth them is the devil. Do we see it? The harvest is the end of the world, and the reapers are the angels. This will happen. God is patient with you, with me, with all of us. And sometimes, yes, we find people who say uh, they, uh, you know, they don't want to have anything to do with Christianity, and they're doing things. It is not God's will. That, that should be so, but it is because of the enemy's strategy 
that has made them that way. So in short, the question is we need to pray that the Christianity we have is authentic, is correct, is true, is right. It can withstand anything. And if we are not truly sincere or genuine in our Christianity, there is time. The good thing is there is still time. Today is a day of repentance. It is not tomorrow. We can change today. We can pray that all our loved ones who are not true, who are not sincere, who are not genuine, will repent while there is time. But once the alarm sounds, the bell sounds, the, uh, the call sounds, it will be too late. So today is the day of righteousness, of holiness, of obedience. And if we apply them to our lives, then we know we have what we need. And God will give us that eternal life, that eternal security. To close, to review, Matthew 13, 40 says, As therefore the tears or the imitations or the fake are gathered and burned in the fire, so shall it be in the end of this world. Do we see that? All those who are not true, they are going to spend eternity in the lake of fire. It is fire all throughout. And the fire doesn't end. The fire doesn't close. So those who are still living in sin, this is the time to repent. Because when one gets into the lake of fire, we know in the Revelation it's also there, right? Where those who are going to be tormented day and night. But may the Lord help us so that we become wheat today, not tomorrow, right now. And if we don't know, confess our sins and repent. 41. The Son of Man shall send forth his angels, and they shall gather out of his kingdom all things that offend, that are disobedient, that are wrong, and them which do iniquity, those who sin, those who continue to sin, they will be gathered. And what will happen to them? 42. And shall cast them into a furnace of fire. Do we see it? Well, for example, we cook, we bake, we do things, right? And when we want, we put something on the fire, it burns. It is not a play, it's not a joke, it burns. And that's what will happen to people. And uh, what will happen to them? 42 again, and shall cast them into a furnace of fire. There shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth, grinding of teeth. Mm, no. Why, why didn't I believe? Why didn't I submit? Why didn't I surrender? Why didn't I, you know, but it is going to be late. It is going to be too late. So today is the day of salvation. Today is the day to repent. Today is the day to accept the Lord Jesus Christ and follow him. It may be a long process, but then not to worry about that. You do one day at a time. Serve the Lord. Serve Christ. And we have the eternal blessings that we need. 43. Then shall the righteous shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father who hath ear to hear. Let him and her 
here. We thank God for what he has brought to our attention regarding becoming wit, becoming right, obedient to the word of God. May we take this seriously. This is not a joke. People, we are all afraid of fire, right? But when somebody is being burned in fire, we know it's, oh, it's fire, fire. But then this fire is not this, the fire that we have all seen here. Sometimes you are burnt and you are able to, uh, you know, come out and then you feel, oh, I'm burnt a little bit and we are burnt. What about if it's every part of you being burnt? What are you going to do? No escape. And it's not just once, every day. Oh, may God have mercy. We thank God for what he has brought to our attention. And uh, let us pray.